Okay, so this is just a short uh, film for you, but just a really important one um, to talk about conditioning of flowers. So I have a wedding tomorrow. The flowers came in this morning. It's all quite tight, um, but one of the th it's mostly roses. And part of your job on a my job on a Thursday morning is um, getting everything into water. So it'll all come in crates. Um, I get delivery. I'm lucky. Uh, and everything will come in in these plastic wraps. So the first thing you have to do, I might be teaching you to suck eggs, but the first thing you need to do is just to take all the plastic wraps off. So I guess when you're, you're buying all your flowers, all your flowers have come in, you do need to account for your time that it's going to take, so it will take me a morning to get everything into water. Um, you need to account for that in your costings when you're talking to, you know, your clients, your you know brides, your grooms, whatever you're, whoever you're working with, because if it's going to take you three, four hours, that's your time, and they need to pay for it. So when you're conditioning, essentially, you're taking, like I said, you're taking the plastics off, but you're stripping most of the foliage from about here downwards on whatever the flower is, be it roses, be it lisianthus, you know, anything. Um, it, this needs to come off because it's that's what's obviously going to be sitting in water and I think if the leaves are in the water then it just creates more bacteria and it's not very not very nice so I am doing it slightly oddly here I mean these roses I've conditioned already they're already done but um, I'll have Dutch buckets or just just buckets um, I've given them a really good clean hot water and I use a touch of bleach just to make sure that the water is really clean um, and then I'm good to go. So that's another part of your job. I remember when I worked in a florist in Oxford and on a Wednesday and a Saturday, that was my job, was to clean all of the buckets. So bleaching, scrubbing, just getting rid of all of the rubbish out of them. But obviously I'll have done that. This vase is full of clean water and I have here a pair of rose strippers. Now I worked my first job, boss was Dutch and she worked with a knife. So she stripped roses with just with a a knife, uh, she felt that it was a better way to do things for the flowers and she wouldn't even use scissors so she was cutting everything with a knife which is a bit terrifying. I have tried it a couple of times but for me I'm not comfortable, I think I sit, I sit with scissors. So rose strippers, all you're doing is you're putting the stem in there and you're just pushing down, okay, and as you can see it's stripping all of the leaves off for you. So it's a bit you might, you might find it a bit mindless, but it's actually, you can get it done quite quickly. It'll feel odd to start with, um, but you're, you're just wanting to get rid of all of that foliage. Um, again, a lot of, if you talk to a lot of florists, they'll probably say that their first job was conditioning, sweeping, making cups of coffee. Because again, the other thing is you'll make a mess. Um, <laughs> you have to get used to it. I know for a lot of florists, if they're working at home, that's always an issue because I'm imagining I've done a couple of things, you know, in my kitchen and you just end up trashing the place. Um, but it is it's worth thinking about. Um, so, yeah, making sure you've got a good bin. Um, so you've got, and you've also got a compost bin as well that you can put all of your greenery in. Because we're based here at a farm, everything goes into their big compost, which is fantastic. Um, and also thinking about recycling you know, recycling your plastics, try and think about that. Where are you going to take them? What are you going to do with them? Um, so going back to the rose strippers, you don't really need to hold very, very hard. Um, some people think you've just got to literally slice everything off. You have, but you don't need to push that hard. So just holding it gently. Um, these roses, I think, are 50 centimetre long. So again, that's another thing when you're ordering to think about. Oops, also cut the elastics off. So I wanted these for uh, bouquets, so I went for the slightly longer, longer length. Because when you're ordering roses, if you're ordering shorter roses, the heads generally get smaller. So 40 centimetre would probably give you a really teeny tiny head. So when you're, when you're um, doing bouquets, you need to think about that. Right, that's all of the leaves off, so everything's clear. And then literally, just going along and chopping off. I 
I'm probably, I'm not charging it, chopping a huge amount off, but I am chopping at an angle. Um, I'm not militant about what angle it is, but it's just, it's coming off. There you go. And that's done. So they're beautiful roses. These are pink avalanche, avalanche or rond. So they're just a slightly bigger head. They'll sit in the warm and open up quite nicely, I think. Um, but that is essentially conditioning roses. So a good thing to learn. Um, and they're ready to go. Cool. So these roses are all conditioned now. Um, in your planning for, if we're talking about a wedding, you're planning that wedding. So it's Thursday, they've come in from the market first thing this morning. I've conditioned them now. They'll sit in water until tomorrow morning when I start doing table centres. Um, so it's important that they have a really good drink. You do need to be aware in the sort of different weathers that we have, especially in the UK, uh, that if, for instance, it's a heat wave like we had this summer, then I would probably A, put them out of any sunlight whatsoever. If, they, if I was worried that they were going to get soft, then I would wrap them up in brown paper or just wrap something around the tops of the heads just to keep them together so that they don't blow quicker than they, they probably would do. Um, but yeah, I would probably put them at the end of my workshop so it's out of sight and it's in a, in a cool space. So that's worth thinking about. But definitely important that they, they sit and have a drink. I think when you're thinking about things like the sort of David, David Austin roses, the bigger roses, you need those more open. So I would always buy those on a Tuesday. It can be a bit of a nightmare, <laughs> nightmare sort of judging, because uh, you, again, you've no idea what the weather's going to do. You need them open and beautiful on the wedding day. So it is, it's a learning curve. I've had some roses. I tend to buy more sometimes than I need, but you're always thinking about your bottom line. You know, you don't, don't want to waste money where you don't need to. Um, but it is a learning curve. But these, I mean, these are lovely and tight. They will open to a certain extent. And um, I know that some people will buy these on a Tuesday or a Wednesday. You know, they, they buy them and get them a lot larger. But for me, um, for what I need them for, they'll be okay at the weekend and look beautiful. So that's just a couple of tips around conditioning, stuff to think about. If you are going to, um, say for instance, you've bought them on a Tuesday, it's definitely worth changing the water because that's the other thing is they can sit and get, especially if the weather's hot, they can get sit and get sweaty in here and it's really not attractive. So probably every day, I would say two days, probably you're changing the water, putting a touch of bleach in, just making sure it's really fresh. And also if you, worst case scenario, you just chop the bottom so that the, the bottom of the stem, so it can just re-drink again. Um, that's always worth thinking about. Um, yeah, so there you go. That's a, a couple of tips on conditioning for you. So if you've enjoyed this video, why not click like and then subscribe below?